This story really began six weeks ago on a quiet morning in a forest near Vernonia. These trees belong to the International Paper Company, and again this year, the company has donated one of them to the National Enquirer. Since it boasts the largest circulation of any newspaper in America, it seems appropriate it would decorate and display the world's largest Christmas tree. And after a transcontinental train ride, that's just what this Oregon-grown fir will be. Falling a large tree like this in a dense forest takes a lot of time and special technique. The tree doesn't actually fall, it swings on protective cable after it is cut loose at the base. Then more cutting. Most of the branches are taken off. Only God can make a tree, but when the branches and trunk are marked with code, man can certainly reassemble one by the numbers. At day's end, three trucks full of Christmas tree go to board the train at Columbia City. It will be a 3,600-mile trip from cold, foggy Oregon to sunny Florida, and that requires a specially built container with climate control so the tree will weather the Rockies and the plains on its way south. Lantana, Florida is about as far as you can travel from Oregon and still be on U.S. soil. It's on the Atlantic coast and the winters are mild and sunny. Christmas just didn't seem like Christmas to Enquirer publisher Generoso Pope when he moved the paper to Florida in 1971. So he had a large Christmas tree put up on the grounds. It was a 45-foot tree and we put it up and lit it for our employees. And before we knew it, mobs of people started coming. And uh, we had a huge number of people during the Christmas season just stop by and look at it. The next year, we decided to get a bigger tree and add a few displays. And each year, it just grew from that. Members of a local motorcycle group provide a lot of the muscle needed to reassemble and decorate the tree. That takes two or three weeks. And after eight years of this, Guy Peterson is definitely a man who knows his Harleys and his holiday decor. We've got about 1,500 ornaments that go up on the tree. They all have to be polished. They all have to be put together and checked out, make sure there's no cracks in them or anything. And they run from, you know, this size of a basketball down here to just about a grapefruit, so they're all pretty good size. snowflakes here have got to be straightened. They all have to be wired. You know, every, everything has to be checked out before it goes up onto the tray. I get my real kicks watching the people and just walking around among, amongst the crowd, uh, just listening to the comments. And I particularly like the little kids that come, the little children with their pajamas on, little toddlers, and they really, the, the expressions in their faces are incredible. Fifteen hundred ornaments, 25,000 feet of garland illuminated by 14,000 lights, turned on for the season two weeks ago. The 115-foot tree is visible for miles in every direction, of course. By the time this Christmas is over, hundreds of thousands of people will have visited the Enquirer grounds for a close-up look, and they'll see more than the tree. It's surrounded by decorated walkways and lighted displays, and an HO scale model railroad system with computer control. Donated a goodwill gift from the people of Oregon to the people of Florida, they like to tell you here. By the time the bills are in, this holiday cheer will cost the inquirer about $200,000.